Disclaimer for the voice of Men360. Please be advised that content brought forward for any event facilitated voice of Men360 is always brought forward in good faith. Facilitated speakers, panel members, and audience participants are responsible for their own good judgment in taking action that may relate to this discussion. If you need crisis intervention or therapy, you need to engage the services of a mental health professional. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panel discussion, please feel free to contact Voice of Men360. With that being said, should you choose to volunteer and participate, we welcome you. Should you decide to leave, we respect your actions and welcome you at a later date. Welcome to Unspoken Tears. My name is Dave Rogers, and I am broadcasting today from Toronto, Canada, after a very volatile 36 hours with technology here in Canada. It is a pleasure and honor to be hosting somebody who's experiencing some technical difficulties in their part of the world, Dr. Mark Jones. I've known Dr. Mark Jones for about a decade and a half and he has been one of the most incredible teachers friends and uh, guides on my journey uh, dr mark jones are you there today good morning to the world out there wow it's it's like uh the way i've seen you for many many meetings mark uh great to have your energy on the channel today to talk about a topic that is probably one of the most important right now, and it's all about mental health and wellness. Uh, Mark, uh, share a little bit about yourself. I'd love to hear what is your current model of the world. Dr. Mark, what, what, what are you doing today? Um, currently um, working with training in quantum EFT and feng shui essential oils um, and assisting the planet with uh, structured water and um, proper air quality using uh, structured air ionization and so assisting in counseling and other other projects fantastic mark uh, you've you've been involved in so many projects around the world and we have a, a beautiful picture that's going to come in and out during our interview or conversation today uh the importance of water in one's health the importance of good air in one's health when we first met in pune at osho's ashram what were you looking for there um you <laughs> quite honestly um for those of you who will are okay with kind of more of the spiritual path i actually communicate with my guides teams angels if you believe in such things or intuition or higher consciousness however you must uh wrap your head around it intuition or guidance said you need to go to Pune. You need to go to the Osho Ashram and you need to stay there for one night because there is somebody you have to meet there. So I went all the way from uh, Bombay to the Osho Ashram by taxi and got there and went to check in and the people said, you can't stay at the Osho Ashram inside for one night. And however it got arranged, I got to spend one night there inside. And the next morning, there was David, and he can take it from there. So for our listeners today, some of you might be going, that is really listening to your intuitive guidance that is really being connected there must be an incredible process you have to go through to have that type of trust or faith or good listening skills uh, you have been a, a teacher of intuition and 
you taught me that very first day we met about listening to my guides, listening to my inner voice, discerning between the nice little angel on one side and perhaps the little naughty devil on the other side. For people right now that are going through some turmoil in their life, Mark, you've, you've shared so many wonderful wisdom over the years, yet you make it so simple. Share a little bit about the importance of words and perhaps one or two key words that you invite people to practice as part of developing a greater conversation or intuition with themselves. Um, for those who hear what I'm about to say, I don't mean any offense to anybody. And if it's not your path, my apologies for those. Um, but this is my understanding of the way the universe works. So again, I don't mean to offend anybody. Um, and the first thing I would do when I begin assisting somebody, I would request that they make this statement, gatekeepers of light, guardian angels, kachinas, helpers, divine beings, I give you permission to do your job if you're not doing it already. And why do I start out with this? It's called spiritual hygiene. When we start our day and start our journey, we have physical hygiene that most of us do, like brushing teeth, showering if the water is available, cleansing. And there's also spiritual and emotional hygiene that we have to take care of to make sure we're doing well. As we know oftentimes that if we don't keep the emotional body clear, that it can lead to physical manifestation and illnesses. So also with the spiritual, you need to keep that clear and clean. And that's the beginning step is allowing that protection. So essentially, if you have a nice large house, if you're blessed to have that, and you have a guard looking at the gate. The same thing spiritually, you have somebody working at your gate so that no inappropriate beings or energies can come through. Is that helpful? Thank you, David. It's, it's extremely helpful from a perspective of A, you invited anybody with any belief structure to simply be good with their existing way of seeing the world. And so you then respectfully invited or offered a different interpretation. And I found that when you first shared that concept with me, quite respectful. It wasn't attacking. It wasn't telling that you know something better. It was inviting me to talk to my guides. It was inviting me to, uh, when I enter a forest, to acknowledge the gatekeepers of the forest. There's a certain amount of respect and honoring that you're talking about. And this term that you're using today, this spiritual hygiene, <laughs> what a wonderful term that uh, it is about a daily practice. It is about being curious and being aware of what you see and what you don't see. And we have been taught these days that many of the things that are there, we might not see. Uh, many of the things that are in an audio frequency are there, but we don't hear. Some of the things that we smell or don't smell our senses are one way to experience the world yet you've explored other ways to experience the world particularly through some of your trainings with indigenous elders with medicine men and women with people who are using intuition relationship with spirit would you share one of your most recent lessons from an elder and what were they guiding you? And, and what was the communication like? 
Um, for those of you who uh, want to understand or believe a little bit better about that connection, I have two wonderful ones. Both are actually Christian based mediums. Um, and I gave them permission to assist me if they got communication from my guides and angels and they needed to pass it on to me. So I was down at the Union Hall thinking about getting on a ship. And all of a sudden, Donna calls me and I pick up the phone and she says, Mark, your angels and guides are saying you're thinking about getting on a ship. Don't get on it. As she's hanging up, Raven's calling me saying, Mark, your guides and angels are thinking about you getting on a ship. Don't get on it. And she hangs up and I didn't take the ship. Had I joined that ship on Sunday, there was a hazmat spill on the ship. I could have died. And the captain on the ship was bipolar. And it would have been a horrendous journey. The next week, I got the Pacific. And it was a beautiful four months on the ship, like a paid vacation. So there's an example of communication with both um, indigenous elders. They're both also indigenous elders. So is that helpful? Well, again, it's, it's again, a demonstration, the way that you engage with voices, you engage with people who have developed a sixth sense, a seven sense, and you've developed a trust to listen to it. There are listeners today that have been traumatized, that have been lied to, have been cheated, and they don't trust anybody, especially themselves, especially if they're now into addictions, if they're into letting, giving away their accountability, responsibility. What are one or two ways, Mark, that people can, from perhaps a, a very strong basis of distrust, start to develop a inner trust? Well, um, some very important tools that would be helping one to get to center and balance, uh, first off, is essential oils. If people aren't allergic to smell or sense, finding the appropriate oils, um, like Krishna Badapa utilizes, um, it's one of the most effective ways to bring one to peace and center. And if you have the right combination of oils, you can actually assist in relieving grief, panic, um, such as using rescue remedy. Um, they have pastels, so people who have, you don't have to use the alcoholic drops. You have the pastels, and it's a hugely effective means to help get centered and balanced, as well as um, using EFT, um, which is probably one of the fastest means using tapping currently to assist in that process. That and also sacred sounds or toning. If I may have permission, David, may I give an example of toning? Certainly. Let me uh, let okay. me just do a little uh, recap because you've used the term EFT a couple of times, and I just wanted to let our listeners fill it out. It's referred to as emotional freedom technique, folks. There's an element that when I first met Mark, he was – into helping me get balance and it was funny because i was just about to go do some kundalini dynamic meditation uh at the osho ashram so that's about getting a little out of balance so mark was there guiding me to breathe in through the nose out through the mouth slow down get out of that 
that frantic fight, flight, freeze dynamic that so many people are living in stress, constant stress, and breathe to a point where we come back into center. So essential oils will essentially open up your breathing and then it will also infuse wonderful ways for your pathways to clear and cleanse. With EFT, emotional freedom technique, there's a number of tapping points on our body that again, it's like giving your body a meridian massage, giving it a little shiatsu massage, combining it with breath, combining it with peace and harmony. Uh, that is a way to shift from that state of whether it's depression or it's anger or it's confusion or it's overwhelm by breath work and experimenting and practicing with breath work it can often lead you to a whole new way of living and this practice it is the invitation now he's going to go into the next area which i was going to ask a little later yet it's beautiful now to talk about toning so, Mark, why don't you just do a toning and then we can do a little bit of a, a deconstruct of what it does and perhaps even some of the left brain logistics on what it impacts. So, yes, Mark, Dr. Mark Jones with a toning, folks. Um, for those of you that are OK with it, I would request that you, whether you believe they exist or not, kindly call in your healing teams your angels, your guardians of light, and uh, the divine beings that assist you. Whether you, it's kind of like you, some people can't see electricity, yet you flip the switch and the lights come on. We have the divine energies that are around us, whether we believe in them or not, and they're still here to assist us. So I, again, for those of you who don't think that way, I don't mean to offend you. It's just the way I perceive the universe. Okay, here we go. Om. Curious if anyone's uh, listening or watching, if you feel like typing in a comment or a question, feel free to do that. This is an engaging practice. This is today about mental health and wellness. We're sharing some different modalities today that will perhaps assist you. It, if it triggers some curiosity, I invite you to go and do a little personal research, experiments. It's one of the things that Mark would you be able to share one or two or three things that a toning like that does for the physical body? Or would you rather answer what it does to the spiritual body? Well, again, if we go to more of a scientific basis uh, using uh, the GDV or the bio well to measure um, the body frequency and energy when you use toning or harmonics 
it simply helps to balance the frequencies in the body. Um, and it's like listening to, and it also helps to bring joy to the system. When you listen to sacred chants or hymns, um, when it brings that peace and that joy and happiness to the body. Um, when I travel and I go to hotels and things where it doesn't feel so comfortable when you go into the space. Uh, what's worked for me in the past, I carry the Agni Hotra on my phone. And I'll simply um, burn a little incense if it's allowed and let the Agni Hotra go and clear the space. And within a short time, it's comfortable to sleep where it might not be otherwise. And to just help bring peace within myself or space using different sacred sounds or music uh, to assist the harmonics of the body and the spirit and the mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I guess the question or the continued discussion about is your by you invoking the healing guides or guardians or spirits to come in to be part of the healing. You're also uh, assisting with the breathing, with the smelling to come into some balance. You're also doing some soul work that then comes into the heart. And then the heart directs the mind to perhaps feel differently or focus on feeling different. You've even in the past used words like effortless ease when people are creating a spell in their life that oh it's so hard it's so difficult i'm overwhelmed i'm stressed out they're creating this chaotic vortex of energy that is so fragmented and so scattered where that toning it it tones everything it brings it back into balance perhaps even along the meridians even along the key areas of the body to allow one to feel peaceful, feel rested, feel joy, feel bliss. Western medicine tends to focus on the messages from the body and then treats the characteristics of the body's distress. What you're doing is treating the soul to bring it into the heart to perhaps influence the mind. What is the way that you love to share words to allow interrupts to give peace and harmony to people maybe share a few of your favorite words to assist somebody on their journey back to a peaceful position thank you very much for that wonderful explanation and yes as grandma twy from the seneca wolf clan taught me many many years ago Word medicine and being responsible with your thoughts and words because there is a strong potential that they will create your reality. So the other information I would share with individuals is about changing their reality. We live in a multiverse string theory. Um, where an infinite number of different realities coexist simultaneously. And by using the appropriate words, the appropriate frequencies, we can shift ourselves into that other reality where thing, the experience is effortless, is joyful, is happy. So, universe... From this moment forward, I'm going to have an effortless, joyful, prosperous, healthy, wealthy, joy-filled, unconditionally loving experience from this moment forward. And by putting out intentions like that, it helps to shift you into that dimension, into that reality. 
And also counting back, as Joey Yap shared a long time ago, counting from 64 to 1 backwards to bring yourself to that alpha state or that more relaxed state where you can make those requests for health and stamina and peace of mind much easier. Is that helpful? Well, again, if people are listening, Mark is sharing wisdom from his journey. And one could be a, a young master in Malaysia, like Joey Yap. One might be a 80 something year old elder from an indigenous clan who's talking word medicine. Mark, you studied anthropology. You have a degree in anthropology. You studied religious studies. You're an ordained priest. When you speak today to perhaps other people of the cloth, I've seen it. You speak with such respect, such endearment, and there's a there's a, an honoring in your code. It's not like you're telling everyone to follow one way. You're actually, I've noticed, just so playful in your way of engaging perhaps someone's guides, perhaps a connection that you've experienced in a past life. Share a little bit about deciding to, to go into religious studies and what were some of the challenges you had at the early stages of your journey? I was very fortunate to meet uh, Jim Barnett, um, who was a Vedanta monk for over 22 years. And Jim was very kind enough to share with me uh, the process of Roberto Asagioli's work, NET, neuroemotional release techniques, and other wonderful teachings and psychological modalities. And in his process, he taught me, as besides how to do exorcisms, um, he taught me about effective means. So whoever you're communicating with to honor their path to the best of your ability. And he taught me that nobody's a teacher. We're all equal. We are here to share what we've learned along the path. And you all actually know everything. It's just whether you've chosen to remember it or not. And another person might have remembered it first. And they're sharing their experience, their knowing, before you have to assist you on your path. We're all equals on the journey. Don't put anybody on a pedestal so they have to fall off. Keep them as equals and use unconditional love and compassion. Okay. Uh, thank you, Grandfather Jim. You've spoken about Jim Barnett in the past to me, and uh, one of the stories that you shared with me that remi remains in my, uh, my memory banks and also I've shared with people around the world is uh, Jim's empathic healing practice. And I'm purposely using the word practice is because for whoever's listening today and if you're picking up a an invitation to go and explore EFT, or you're hearing that, wow, essential oils, I, I've heard about them, you're going to go and explore. Uh, you can experiment. And the experiments that uh, Jim Barnett shared with you was in empathic healing, and that he would be able to uh, provide a cleansing, a remove cancer. Uh, and his modality to do that was to remove the cancer, then 
he would go and have a delicious meal. Do you want to pick up the story? What would Jim do to release the dis-ease or energy or dark energy or dark matter? And sh can you complete that story, Mark? Well, the first time I was guided to take Jim Barnett, Grandfather Morning Owl, to Australia. Um, and he would do a three-day workshop ending in a purification lodge or an anipi ceremony. And during that weekend, he would have Australian firemen, policemen, fishermen in cathartic tears. He was able to guide them through a number of psychological processes, as well as himself being empath, knowing exactly what the individuals were going through and feeling, and being able to complete the process in three days, where normal psychiatrists and psychiatrists wouldn't get to for 10 years, they would be completed in three days through his combination of different modalities using effective means for the group. Thank you. And I, uh, I remember that, correct me if I've, if I've maybe mixed uh, teachers yet, when uh, a clearing was done, if he was able to locate the cancer cells and then assist with the release immediately of the cancer cells or a big portion of the cancer cells, he would then eat a steak as a way to have some matter to release it out of his system as a part of his protection, as a part of his process that would allow that transfer of energy not to go on to him and would actually go out in the biodegradable manner. Yes, um, that is very correct. Um, he would use his dietary methods to make sure that he stayed strong and whole. Um, in the case of cancer, um, we were up in Cairns and there was a nurse who had um, chosen to go through the experience of cancer. And with his modalities, he was able to clear the majority of things and there was one last trigger. So he also uses um, hypnosis as part of his modalities. And he was able to ID within the nurse that age three or four, her sister had said that she, she wished that she was dead and that she had no right to live. So for the nurse, her sister's words had imprinted at three or four. And so she was self-sabotaging her healing process. And once they were able to clear that using the various techniques that Jim uses, all of a sudden the light came back on inside the nurse. And it didn't matter what modality she chose, she was going to get better because that self-sabotaging roadblock had been removed. And so some would say that that would be a trauma and many of the traumas that people are really struggling with later in their life were triggered age two, three, five, seven, ten. In our programs with Voice of Men 360, we're noticing a lot of uh, children traumatized during their youth. Uh, would you be, uh, again, we've been sharing modalities and the word modalities for folks is, it's different types of remedies. These are, these are practices that have been used for decades and millennia and even beyond as a way to bring the body into some type of homeostasis. When it's out of balance, we're looking for ways to get it in balance. When we're holding on to a trauma, we've gotta look for ways to release the trauma. 
sometimes going back into a regression and imagining your time when you were a three-year-old, what else could have that mean is providing alternative pathways that somebody can let go. And one of the words that you've used so elegantly with me is with effortless ease. And it might take a little practice of effortless ease, effortless ease, because for weeks, months, years, decades, people hold on to that memory, that trauma becomes so entrenched in the neurology, in the certainty, in the reality. And we're rewriting reality. We're rewriting the story. We're perhaps even going further, Mark. We're actually going, for some people, into karma. Share a little bit about karma and the way that karma impacts people's journey present now. Okay, thank you. Um, of all the different modalities that I've seen so far, NET was probably the most effective combined with grief recovery, diet, other things that Jim had taught me. But and what I've been studying recently is quantum EFT with Jenny out of Australia. And Quantum EFT takes into kind of account the karmic lesson without calling it that way. Because using quantum EFT and the tapping solution, it allows the individuals to go to those different places in one's journey and her webpage describes it more succinctly, um, the ability to access the past DNA and to clear that where I, in her workshops, I have seen people who had pain, physical pain that was related to past life that using the quantum EFT she had cleared in approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And it was gone, provided that the people were ready to release it. Um, past life. An example using quantum EFT was a friend of mine, Jeffrey. And when she was working with him, he realized that he had been a pirate in the past. He had three different companies that were stolen from him. And part of that was due to his karmic experience of being a pirate in the past life. And he had five pirate ships. And in the session, he realized he'd been thrown over the side in a past life and died, drowned. And that one of the, the person who had actually thrown him over the side and seized his ships was actually one of the people in this life that had stolen one of his companies. There's an example of past life. And fortunately, Jenny was able to assist him in clearing that trauma from back then so that his journey now could be much more effortless and not be sabotaged again so he wouldn't lose companies in the future and that he could have prosperity and wealth and live in peace and happiness. Uh -huh. I'm having a, a, a feeling that people are still perhaps curious a little bit more of how does karma get passed on? Does it get passed on generation to generation? Does it get passed on through the soul? Does it get passed on through DNA? Um, what would be a little bit of a download or perspective from, from you, Mark? Um, there are a number of different perspectives on how um, karma happens. Um, amongst the Seneca, there's the understanding that we choose the time of 
our birth, the general time of departure, and our basic experiences that we're going to come here with. And with that knowledge, there's also a soul contract that happens before we enter that we actually sign up to go through certain experiences. And part of that contract may be to clean up things that we did in the past. Um, so that if we choose to get off the wheel, we can. And then others, um, like in quantum EFT, Jenny's work, they also tie it in with the DNA structure um, and going to the Akashic records and being able to clear the books, you might say. Well, I would, and I might, because when we were chatting in Singapore, I believe, you were referring to Akashic Records with me, and you made a couple of suggestions that my next trip to India, that I go and, and visit uh, and get some Akashic Record work done, and I did. And uh, I guess my question to you is, share a little bit about what are the Akashic Records, and does everybody have an Akashic Record? Well, in India, fortunately, there are the Nadi leaves, where you can actually physically go and have your Nadi read. There's a number of different types of Nadi. There's Augustia, there's Vashista, um, and there's Brigu Nadi. And Nadi leaves were written, the last translation um, at least for Augustia and Vashista, was done over 300 years ago. The original transcription actually dates back to over 10,000 years ago. Yeah, it might stretch your mind, but the, the palm leaves, the last translation was 300 years ago, whatever the case is. And the first time I had my naughty leaves read um, I'd taken my godmother Pauline from Singapore and a doctor friend from Singapore as well and we were in Madras and went to an audio reader and he you just use your thumbprint and the the person intuitively the reader will go to a library where all these, what they call condoms, are kept. And they will bring them back. And based on that thumbprint, they will bring the, the group of condoms out. And they will start flipping through. And they will read from them. And your name, mother's name, sister's name, father's name, children's name, why you came here, and all that information, which was at least written 300 years ago, at least. And that's a form of the Akashic record in called Nadi from India. That's the physical form. Um, and it even had Pauline Tang. It had the Chinese names, right? Um, which was a little difficult for the gentleman to pronounce, but it was all there for the doctor, for myself, for Pauline. Um, it took a little bit longer to find um, Dr. Uh, Yo's, but they had to go through, I think, like three or four condoms before they found it. And Pauline's was like halfway through, and mine was like three, three in. Um, and then you have the spiritual Akashic records, which are available for pretty much everybody to go to go see. Um, yeah. And um, 
those can be done at a spiritual level where you're taken like with Jenny to the Akashic records or going through hypnosis or Akashic record workshops or through deep meditation. Um, which can access like a library where you can go and pull each lifetime and take a look and it, it's experience that and help to clear that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, I went on uh, your guidance, uh, went to get some naughty readings in uh, Bangalore and also in Mumbai and i found it to be quite insightful uh, in one of them they gave about a 90 page report and uh it was it, i guess it fed the curiosity of perhaps things to look for to be aware of to almost have a, a little bit more playfulness in the journey and that i stopped taking things so darn seriously at the time uh, um very wired type a drive 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 and it uh it definitely gave me another modality or a different perspective uh i want i'd love to get into uh, some approaches right now and because you've been so generous with your sharing and and your experiences and it's uh given that we're really inviting more wellness into people's life today and we're inviting um mental um, abundance what would be is there a recipe you can share with me today because a big part of our journey together also has been uh, studying and being part of ayurvedic uh, you spent a lot of time with uh, ayurvedic masters and i have a feeling you're a master in it also however the way that your humility works is that there's always a master yet you're also not going to put them on a pedestal so they can fall off. And so we can all learn from each other. And I think that's the beautiful thing that I'm experiencing right now, whether I'm going golfing with a 11 year old, like I did yesterday, or uh, spending time with a 92 year old who's on their deathbed is that there's a, a honoring, a respect, a, a pleasantness of being in, in somebody's presence. And, enjoying the gift of being part of their life. Let's talk about some everyday approaches that can assist people, because you've talked about water. Uh, you haven't talked too much today about fresh vegetables or fresh fruit. Uh, you've shared a little bit, well, specifically about word medicine, mantras, toning, chanting, giving compliments uh we could go into some writings some poetry some acknowledging beauty nature i guess as i say all what i just said i was always impressed with the way that when we walked in nature the way that you demonstrated and showed the honoring of the gatekeeper trees the honoring of all living beings give us share with us four or five tips that people could start infusing in their wellness recipe. Perhaps a couple of real basic ones, yet also perhaps a spice it up with one or two that might be with taste or might be with uh, really um, tasting the nectar of the honeybee. Well, <clears throat> one key to life is keeping joy within the system. And when I was lecturing near Cornell University at a center, a lady was experiencing cancer. And I asked her, what brings you joy? Does music bring you joy? Does wonderful food, are there any key foods that like you like that help to bring joy to your life? Is a sunset. Is it being out in the rain, the beauty of the wind? Is it listening to the wind and the rain? <clears throat> Does that bring joy to your being? 
grandchildren or parents or friends, is there anything that brought her joy? And in for, unfortunately, in her case, there was not one thing in her journey <clears throat> that brought her joy. And in that experience, um, that would definitely leave an opening for dis-ease to happen. So a key tool is to bring joy, true joy and happiness into one's heart each day. And keeping a gratitude journal, if you have the time and the space you know, write down what you're grateful for. You know, I woke up this morning. I had a wonderful meal. I had a chance to share with Voice of Men 360. I had the chance to give my children a kiss in the morning. To show the love for my wife or my husband. The gratitude of being together. That gratitude alone to the earth, to the sky, to the water we drink. The gratitude for the food that we offer our body. That we're healthy, we're whole. The attitude of gratitude is key. And that keeping joy within our system. Even if it's just one or two things to start with, it's a beginning point. To take that walk in nature and to observe the messages that nature gives us. Be it the eagle that flies through the sky or the heron bringing us wisdom. Or seeing the otter or the mouse, jumping mouse, or the raven, or the crow, or the hawk, or the whale, or the dolphin, or even the ant people. What's the messages that they're bringing us, or the bunny? Being aware of your universe, being aware and perceiving with consciousness that which is about you and giving gratitude for it. And as you sit down to have that lovely meal, or even a meal in itself, because you're fortunate to have food on the table, or if you aren't fortunate enough to have food on the table, if you had to go to the rubbish bin and there was food, somebody had left, they hadn't finished, and it brought you nurturing. It brought you some joy to your spirit. And to offer up that food when you put it on the table. You know, many, many beings give thanks for the food. And when I share with people, as I did with David when we had a meal, it's kind of like take a bite of the food and see where it goes in the body. Then send gratitude to the food and take a bite and see where it goes in the body. Send the food love, take a bite and see where it goes in the body. And then send it love, gratitude and thanks, see where it goes in the body. Then love, gratitude and joy and thanks and offer it up to your ancestors, offer it up to your guides, offer it up to your angels, your teams, your helpers, if that feels appropriate. Again, with whatever I've shared with you is only if it feels appropriate. We have to use discernment in each and every moment, no matter what wisdom, what sharing people give us. We have to make sure it feels correct for us now, in the moment. It may be what I share with you, you put on a shelf. And maybe it's something you share with somebody else later. 
or maybe it resonates with you and you utilize it now and into the future. The hook. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, Mark. Uh, I hope some folks are taking notes. I hope uh, this message today really serves. There's so much wisdom here. Uh, Mark taught me the tea ceremony when we were traveling and he would often gift people tea. Uh, I then brought home the tea ceremony to my mother and I presented her the tea ceremony and she broke down and cried because she was just so incredibly grateful that her son would honor her with the tea ceremony. So some of these modalities, if you experiment with them, your eyes might start to leak. That's also part of the healing, the raindrops into the oceans of healing. I'll also bring in a blessing that has been taught to me by my Tao masters in Canada. Uh, and also in Thailand is blessing the heart. Thank you, heart. Thank you, liver. Thank you, spleen. Thank you, stomach. Thank you, intestines. Thank you, kidneys. By bringing in a blessing and a thanks that Mark has also said to the ancestors. And I am so grateful that he also brought in that key disclaimer, if it feels appropriate. The funny thing is, it might make you smile. It might make you laugh. Yet, is that appropriate or inappropriate? If it's playful and it starts to trigger joy and your merriment in life, that's where Mark's comment, if it feels appropriate, is so appropriate. Mark, we've got about a minute left. Thank oh. you so very much. Is there? Okay. Yeah, David, yes. it, it, when people feel pain in the body, what I would like you to do it's the phone message, ring, 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 answer the phone. Touch the place where the pain is in the body. The body is trying to tell you something's out of sorts. Go in, deep breaths, three deep breaths, close your eyes, ask the body, what are you trying to tell me? what's out of balance and if you agree to make the changes maybe it's as simple i need more rest you tell the body and you actually do it with love that pain will disappear so listen to the body ask the body communicate with your body what's the message what is the pain about and you can normally release it simply provided you will do what the body is telling you to do or asking you to do. All right. Mark, on behalf of, thank you very much, Camille, for adding some lovely comments to the discussion. I'm so glad that you were able to hear and listen to the wisdom of Mark and, and all of his teachers over the years. Uh, Mark's got so many more stories to share, and I'm hoping uh, in a future show of Unspoken Tears or or an upcoming panel discussion, Mark will come back and share some of his journeys and remedies and modalities to be able to transform from pain into joy, pleasure, peace, and harmony. Uh, I'm going to allow you one more last word, Mark. That was sort of a, a last little, little minute uh, instruction. Is there a, a last tone or, or word that you would love to share with the group today? Yes, David. Thank you for your clear guidance in the the sharing today and everybody remember your emotional and spiritual vitamins take them each day with joy and happiness and be fill yourself with that unconditional love to the best of your ability and ask for it to be an effortless joyful unconditionally loving filled journey from this moment forward Thank you. Om. Thank you, Divine Mother. Thank you, Father Sky, Mother Earth, the Great Mystery, and all the Divine Ones. Whichever path you follow, thank you for your blessing for all these children 
as we make this a journey on this planet. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of everyone at Voice of Men 360, thank you to Dr. Mark Jones. Thank you to all of our listeners. We'll be putting some comments in the links uh, on our YouTube channel. Please check it out, share with some friends, and we look forward to seeing you next month with Unspoken Tears. This is Dave Rogers wishing you an absolutely brilliant day, week, and month ahead. Namaste. Cool.